Hi, it's Juliet. Welcome to my studio. Hi, it's Juliet. Welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make knobs for furniture, drawers, or what have you. So here's a, an example of one, and they have a screw in the back, and you, you know, drill a hole in your, your drawer, or whatever it is, and you can attach the knob. So these are made out of glass, and I have uh, several different designs here, and I'll just be showing you how to do the basic one. So what you're going to need is a bit of hardware. So um, I use one quarter by one inch machine screws and 18 gauge wire. And I have a couple of specialized knob making mandrels, which essentially are that size machine screw welded to a mandrel. And what you're going to use is the copper to make the insert. And you align it right with the threads of the screw you melt your glass, no bead release, directly onto this. It adheres, and that then becomes the insert on your knob, and the screw just screws right in. You only need 18-gauge copper wire. Um, I'm looking into having some of these made. Um, these I got many, many years ago, probably 20 years ago, 18 years ago or so. And I uh, don't even remember who I got them, but I've searched high low on the internet because I wanted to get a few more. Okay, so let me tell you about the glass I'm going to use today. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm, how I'm going to decorate the, the knob, but I picked out a particular color palette. And this is um, blues and ambers. It's got some periwinkles and some cobalt blues, some ivories, um, transparent amber. Um, some opal yellow. So it's all in that color palette. Um, this is a color palette. I did some of my amalgamation beads. I've got a couple of videos on that. And this idea of storing a color palette together of random, you know, pulled stringer and twisties was an idea I got from Karina, which I, I just love. So I've got all these little spice jars all over with collections of, um, you know, stringers and stuff that kind of go together. And it's, um, it's kind of nice to just grab it and then, you know, pull your rods out that coordinate with it. So I have, uh, I pulled out several of the stringer or the twisties that were already made. Um, some opal yellow, some transparent amber, some blue twisty, excuse me, blue stringers, some ivory and um, opal yellow stringers. I've got um, a piece of gold stone that I pulled because it's always fun to have a little bit of glitz. And um, we've got some commercial stringers and some full size rods. So I think that's it in the glass department. Oh, I have over here a bunch of Marini. And let me turn this a little bit. Maybe you can see it. I have my little warming plate over there. And I have a whole bunch of Marini in there. And that little oven thing is up to temp. So the top of that warming plate is around six, 700 degrees. So it pre-warms the Marini. So I, I may go off camera to, to grab a piece to incorporate in it. So... I don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but it, it's warmed up and uh, ready to go. Okay, so to get started, what you need is a 9-inch piece of copper wire, um, 18 gauge, so it needs to be thick and heavy, and a pair of needle nose pliers. So what we're going to do is start to curl over the little part that goes on the tip, and you can see there's a little curl here. Um, and then we will wind the rest on and then, and then finish off the curl that closes off the top because you don't want your glass to adhere to the mandrel. It only needs to touch and adhere to the copper. So I'm taking this end and I'm just turning it over ever so tightly in, in, in a small radius. And I'm using this to kind of squeeze it down. Again, you want this to kind of close up so that glass isn't going to ooze in there. It's not drippy runny, so it doesn't have to be completely closed. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm grabbing it and using my thumb to just kind of push around the circle until I get close to the diameter of the screw. And I'm going to just leave it there and kind of uh, work on the other part now. So you need to look at which way the screw goes. So it's going around this way. So the tines are angled this way. So we start over here 
and the end goes that way. So it's going to wrap, wrap around from left to right. So that will be from the top to the bottom. So that means we need to align this so that we've got our little circle that we made up at the top. We'll just leave that little edge hanging over right now and going towards the bottom. So you rest it into one of the grooves and put your thumb against it and then you turn the thing and you align it in the groove. And so what we're doing is essentially taking the wire and I'm, I'm trying to show you this while I, and hold it, but you know, kind of need your finger in the way. So I'm putting my finger down and I'm taking this thumb and I'm actually wrapping it around into the grooves right on the screw. So I'm basically filling up the grooves on the screw with the, with the copper. And you can see if you got it aligned right, you can screw this and unscrew it nice and easily. You'll see how it's threading on and threading off. And that's basically the idea that we want to do. So we want to wind this all the way down you're going to use up basically all nine inches of the copper and that should give you about a half an inch worth on the the mandrel on the screw on the mandrel now if you don't have something like this you could um get the screw in the you know a threaded rod or something that has the same um thread you know um alignment and pitch as a machine screw and you could just use that you want to make sure you use stainless because it's going to get hot and if it's <clears throat> um, like a stainless alloy then the heat won't transmit down so you wouldn't want to use like brass or copper uh, screw insert or something like that um, because the heat will transfer and you'll burn your hands while you're trying to make this so i'm just going all the way down to the end and now when i get down to the end i'm going to take my pliers and just help me to get that last little bit because it's kind of hard. The 18 gauge wire is pretty stiff. It's kind of hard to get it wrapped over nice and smooth and down into, into there. So there we go. We've got that part. And like I say, it's about a half an inch. Now I want to back my screw off a bit. So it's almost to the tip. And I'm going to keep on winding. I may need to back off a little bit more so that my screw is completely inside. And then take that little round bit, and you may need to use the flat part of the pliers. Mine have, have a serrated part here, and then they're smooth here. So I tend to use the, the flat part. And just kind of grab that and bring it around so that it's completely covering the top of the mandrel. Now, before we put them in the flame, we don't want to have the screw sitting all the way up the top. We want to back it off about you know three rounds of wire worth so that's like maybe an eighth of an inch so you don't have it totally up at the top you back it off so that the top of this screw in here is right around there it's about three three circles of the copper down and uh, those are ready to be made into um, knobs All right, let's get started. So um, the first thing you need to do is decide what color the shaft is going to be. And I think I'm going to make the shaft for this one out of periwinkle. So um, I'm going to start warming up my rod of periwinkle blue, which is number 220 in the Fetre color line. And you want to take your mandrel and your copper and put it in the flame. And you see how it's changing from the copper gold to a bluey color to a red color and then to a silvery gray. So you need to heat it up good and hot so that the glass will stick to it. You don't want to like get it, you know, completely flaming red hot, um, you know, burn through it, melt it off. So, but you do want it to go through all those color changes because then you're ensured it is good and good and hot and the glass will stick because this insert is going to stay inside the glass. So you need it to adhere well. You'll also notice at the end where the wire wrap stopped, you've got a bit of a step. So you need to make sure you cover it with enough glass to make that smooth. And we'll be working on that uh, a bit more. So you'll see the glass wasn't sticking because I let it, I was talking <laughs> and I let it cool off. So I want to get this hot. So it just begins to glow red and then my glass will stick to it. I'm going to start by putting a thin wrap just around the base. And I want to build this up a little bit. And then I'm going to marver it down. And when you marver it, it's going to kind of hang off the edge so that 
that part of it, which sits flush up against your cabinet, is nice, smooth, even glass. And the wire is sort of embedded. But there's a balance here. You don't want to have the glass touch down to the main mandrel where you were, um, you know, where, where the screw is that's, you know, welded onto the mandrel because you need to get it off. You really only want the glass touching the wire. But if it overhangs a bit, um, that, that's fine. That's, that's sort of what you want. I'm going to say a little bit there in that thin spot, and then I'm going to marver it a little bit more. I'm using a marvering pad here, which is a piece of 4 inch by 4 inch by, I think, quarter inch brass. And it's sitting on a candlestick holder, actually, um, that I got, I don't know, some craft shop, a dollar shop or something. And it's just the right height to get it off of my desk, so that way my hand can be below and I can marble against it. So if you if you look here on this end now, you can kind of see it goes up and down a bit. So what we're going to do is just clean that up a little bit. And, and we'll be cleaning this up a few times as we go. So I like to use my um, stump shaper and the flat side of the stump shaper. One side has got the curves and the shape, but the flat side is one to use. And I'm going to push it up against it to try to get that flat so that when you have this sitting against your drawer or whatever piece of furniture you're installing the knobs in, it sits flush and it doesn't want to rock around. That's all I'm doing is smoothing that out. A little bit more heat and once more on the marver. Now, like when you're making a, a glass bead, you need to have it thick enough so that it's strong enough. So right now, you know, my glass on there isn't particularly thick. So I just wanted to start it to get my footprint on. Now I'm going to build the glass up on this base, the stem of the, um, of the knob, and get it on there thicker and then get that finalized, um, you know, or pretty good th with the way I want it to look, and then we will move on to the top. And then it's just a matter of keeping that base hot. So right now... I am adding glass and making sure that my copper wire is hot enough to receive the glass. And I'm putting it on there somewhat gingerly. I'm not cramming it down into it, you know, especially this little part that's hanging off the tip. When you get that heat heated up, it can soften and you can misshape it. Um, you also don't want to have the glass like so mushy it's going to drip down in there and then adhere to the screw inside. So I'm getting this first layer on a little bit carefully. I want it to stick to it and go down in those grooves just a little bit, but I don't want it to push all the way through. And the same goes for the very tip. So I'm going to put some glass down on here. And this is why you tend to push more this way, especially when we start building the top. This is why you, un you back it up. Um, you know, a quarter or an eighth of an inch or something, just a little, like three, three um, wraps worth of, this, of the 18 gauge wire. All right, so now this isn't particularly even right now. I don't really care. I'm just worry, working on getting the glass on there. And I'm going to build it up all the way down to the end, but I'm not going to try to overhang the end because I sort of have that flat flush line mostly established although I may go back and clean it up a bit because I see one spot that seems a little low but right now I am just melting and getting the glass on here and basically just building up the volume of glass that I'm going to want for the stem. I also like marvering on this because it's easy to judge when you have it parallel um, to the table you know you can easily tell when your mandrel is parallel if I was trying to marvel it on this, I could have it more conical or flared out. Um, and sometimes it's hard to judge that. But you know, for this one, I'm trying to have this cylinder, just a, a right angle cylinder. So as long as my mandrel is parallel to my table, then it's a little bit easier to judge that. Okay, so at some point I do want to heat it. You see I'm aiming the flame sort of at that end. So I want to get that rounded up and heat it up from that angle. And it's going to tend to suck the glass back this way, but I'm going to marver it again, and that will give it that nice edge. Combination of that and using my stump shaper. This spot here is being a little persnickety. Now this part down here isn't going to be really visible once once it's installed in a cabinet. 
So it's, it's a bit more important to have it flush so that it will sit nicely down on the cabinet. So, you know, like this one here, you know, it doesn't really rock. This, this bottom surface is relatively smooth and you can see it sort of enveloped that wire in there nicely. You know, same, same with this one. It's, it's enveloped the wire nicely. Okay, so now we're going to work on building up the top. And I think I'm going to, let's see, I'll make um, part of it with the white, just because white's a fairly inexpensive um, color. Um, and then I'll add some opal yellow to the parts I think that are going to show and maybe some of the uh, ambers and stuff. But to get the volume of glass on there, I'm going to just use the white. You could also use like an inexpensive transparent or something like that as well. So now the objective here is to pretty much build up the glass to the diameter you want for the pull part of the knob. And it doesn't need to be really wide to be functional. It just needs to have a little bit you can grip with your hands. You know, I, I tend to make them a, a certain size. I have in my studio um, probably 40 knobs. All are different that I've made over the last oh, 15, 20 years. Um, so all of the cabinetry in my, in my studio, they all have fun, funky, different knobs. Um, you know, I tend to, whatever the palette du jour I was working on, I tend to have one of these mandrels just sitting on my workbench and like if I find something I like, I'll just, oh, well, let me just make one that coordinates with my beads that is, um, you know, make it into a, a knob, which is kind of fun because I can go back and, and look at the range of them over the years like, oh yeah, I remember I did that color and hey, that's when I learned how to do those kind of flowers. <laughs> you know, you can pretty much do whatever you want. It's actually hard to get them all to match. It's more fun to have them all different. Okay, so I've, I've just built up um, and get the, got the volume of glass I needed up there. And you can tell I kind of put it on, you know, rotating around. Um, and now I'm going to heat it in from the top. Switch hands a moment. And this is where I find using the top of a uh, lentil tool or you can use a marble mold. Um, I like the, the flusher top of the of the lentil, the slim lentils, um, but you know, you can use whatever shape you want. And you can make these square or triangular, or, you know, whatever, whatever you want, sky's the limit. I'm going to just show you a couple of ideas here. So that, you know, gives a nice rounded top. Um, I often also use it to try to make my edges more round because trying to get the, I'm not Heather Tremlett. <laughs> I really can't get those rounded edges as well, as neat as she does. But, you know, you can kind of knock off some of those other parts. Um, the other thing you can do is heat from the underside. So it's sort of like a mushroom. Now you can heat from the underside and use this edge as well to clean up where those overhangs are. Now I'm going to cover this and put other colors on it, so I'm not going to worry too much details at this point. Around it here with the opal yellow. It's such kind of a warm buttercream color. It's a little bit expensive, but I really love the color. It's not as reactive as the ivory, so it's a little bit, it plays a little bit nicer with other glass in your palette. Another round here. You know, at this point, every so often you do want to go down and heat the base. You don't want to let it get totally cold and crack. Um, if you should get a crack in it, you can heal it and melt it all back in and, you know, remarver it. If you have the top already in work and you have to marver the, the base, you can use the edge of a mandrel like, of a tool like this. It's hard to do that on this big thing because that fat part sticking out um, will sometimes run, uh, rub into it. So this is this is also handy to use for that. Or you could use your stump shaper, whatever tools you might have. If you prefer graphite, um, those graphite tools work great as well. I tend to like the brass. While you're heating and reheating, at some point the um, the, the, the cap or the you know the pull part of the knob can can suck in. So this is another thing I like to use the base of a lentil 
tool for to kind of reshape and flatten that back out. So if you heat it up, and you can tell I'm shooting the flame on the on the underside of the mushroom top, I guess, you can switch my hand grip, get that hot. I go down here on the flame, and you can use your marver to kind of help smooth that back out. So this is the part where you can make them any size you want. Um, generally, the glass in through here is a little bit thicker than it would be uh, for a small bead. So when you anneal it, you want to anneal it like you would a large, a larger bead. And since it has the wire core, it's not completely solid. But um, I, I generally tend to anneal these a little bit longer um, because of the strain of having the insert in there. Like I say, I've, I've been making these mandrels for years, uh, excuse me, these knobs for years, and haven't had any problems with the exception of one that my daughter had her foot on and was leaning on when she was doing something and she broke, broke it off. <laughs> now that's the only one, so don't put your feet on them. She's editing this, so that part will probably get cut out. <laughs> take a darker blue and I'll add some spirals. And you can just decorate this how you would any kind of a bead with swirls and dots and you know you can keep it as simple or as complex as you might want it to be. Let me get another color. Get this um, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, gold stone on it. I'm going to melt most of this in smooth, although I do have a lot of knobs that have texture in them as well. You don't want to have like fiddly bits that can crack off or break off or leave sharp edges, so I tend to smooth them out, although I may have some textural elements, but not super um, exposed ones. Now, you may notice when you're working on it, you know, this, this mandrel is screwed in here, so you can feel it sometimes untwirling or moving a little bit on the insert, and that's fine. That means the thing hasn't all wedged and welded together. And sometimes if you're turning it all in one direction, it's like you're screwing it in or screwing it out. So you, you do want to be a little cognizant of that, um, you know, because that, that insert is designed to have the screw go easily in and out. So just something sometimes they do and sometimes they don't probably has to do with uh, how well I um, aligned the copper in the threads get a little bit more heat on the base I'm feeling like it's been a while and then my my top is rounding over a little bit so I'm going to heat that from the back side and I'm going to use my stump shaper and just kind of flatten that out a little bit more I feel like it's sort of imploding if you will. Okay, now let me grab this and I'm going to get a bullseye marini here. Getting a spot hot on the top of the, uh, the knob. My marini is hot. I'm going to touch it in there and then I'm going to heat it around from all sides and I've got my small press tool I'm going to use to press that down in and sort of spread out. All right, so there's that, and let me get another Marini. We'll try one of these. It's, uh, it's just got some simple stripes around the outside. So I'm introducing it to the flame in the back. I am warming up a spot that's going to receive it on the top of my bead. I'm going to, excuse me, on top of my knob, I'm going to attach that there. And as before, I'm going to heat it from all sides, kind of work it down into it and let it kind of bloom out a little bit. And this one, um, just the design of it looks kind of cool if you poke it in the middle because then it brings all of those radial lines into a point. So I'm going to heat that up a little bit more. And I have a fine pointy poker, a poker set I got from Karina. I love her tools. And I'm going to just push that down in there, and you can see it sort of almost looks like a, some poorly thing or some undersea thing or something. Okay, i got to get a little bit more heat into my stem. 
Don't want any cracks coming up there. And we'll heat to the underside as well. All right, let me heat that guy up a bit. Push it down. I don't want it really raised a whole lot. I mean, a little bit is okay as a textural element. And I think I need one more Marini on here. I like to do odd numbers of things. There we go. That's in there. A little bit of heat, and I like to heat it around from all sides. And I'm going to press that one down a little bit. And this one, I want to retain the, the patterning on the top of the Marini. So I'm going to dip my thing and cool it off so that as I'm heating it, the top is retaining its, its design. It's not, you know, sucking in like the last one. And it, as I heat it, it heats the sides, so those will flare out. But I still retain that um, multi-layered complexity in the, in the center of it. All right, so let me get a bit more heat in my base. I'm getting a little nervous. It's been a while. Looks like there was a spot right there that had a little bit of, I don't know if it was a crack, or maybe I didn't marble it properly or as well, or I bumped it. So I'm going to just give a lot of extra heat right now on this edge. Um, and I'm going to take this and marvel it a bit. I don't want the hot to get the top to get too cold. This is the part you get you're getting down towards the end here and you're worried about the top and the bottom and you say, I got it almost done. You're like, oh my god, I don't want to wreck it. <laughs> so you get a little stressful depending on how complicated you make it. If you want something simple, just do like frit and do a few twirls in the top. Don't do a full on decoration. Probably a little overly ambitious for a tutorial, but hey, maybe it'll work. <laughs> All right, I got that heated. I'm going to just marble it here on the edge of my tool. You can feel there's a lot of glass mass there because, you know, when you're holding this, you're kind of feeling some of the radiant heat coming off of it. I'm also going to marble in this one little section here. That doesn't quite fit. The thing is, sometimes the I've got it backed up enough I can get in there. So I'm going to take. The flat edge of my stump shaper is to the right, and I want to marble that edge so it's nice and smooth, so it'll be smooth against the glass, excuse me, smooth against the cabinet, or wherever you're going to install it. And heat up the top, and I want to press that all down, and I'm using the top side of the lentil press. That'll make a nice dome over all of those uh, marini I put in. Okay, that looks good. All right, a little bit more heat, and this baby's going into the kiln. I've got a little air bubble there. Let me heat that and get that out. Sometimes you'll feel yellow gets air bubbly like that. I'm not quite sure why, but we'll get that out. At the top, looks good. More heat back here on the underside. You don't want to put it in the kiln glowing. Um, because it'll stick to something. I tend to put these on the back of my rack. I have this rack inside the kiln, and when I put it into the kiln, I'll rest it on the back like that so that none of this is touching. It's all kind of hanging in the air. That way I don't, you know, flatten out or make a nick on, on the side. So there we go. I think it looks pretty cool. All right, pop it in the kiln. So guys, here's how these finished knobs came out. Um, they look super cool. And like I mentioned earlier, you can have so much fun with these making a full set of complete mismatch knobs. Here are the ones in the studio. As you can see, there's a ton of them made over the years, um, but it's really fun. So have at it and make some crazy funky knobs for your kitchens, your craft studios, wherever you would like to install them. Thank you guys for watching and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Oh, we have a full playlist um, with tons of different lamp working tutorials for different skill levels, different ideas, all sorts of projects that you can create. I think we're up to like 35 videos now so there's definitely a lot of stuff um, and probably something for everyone to teach you something new or give you a new idea to try out. 
And if you guys are interested in purchasing any of these knob mandrels like we used in this video, please either comment down below um, or send a message to Juliet Page on Facebook. I will link that in the description as well. And once we get enough people together, then we will go ahead and see about making a batch of these fun mandrels. Thanks guys. Until next time, have a great day.